Well, I don't remember where we left off, uh, but I basically had to let this stuff sit for a day. I uh, was getting to, getting kind of frustrated dealing with it and needed to clear head. So did that, and a lot of times that'll give you a fresh start, and it did this time. So let's go through the process again. We wanted to get the software installed on the computer so that we can run the radio's frequencies and settings through the software interface. Now, it's not a direct... I'm not running the radio's controls in real time. I'm just setting the frequencies that it's going to listen to and the frequencies that it's going to transmit on. Uh, the specific frequencies, for example, for the local search and rescue, um, the, to listen to the local police bands, the local television stations, those kind of things. Um, and then the settings, such as the welcome screen, uh, how you want your microphone and uh, speaker to uh, work with each other, how you want what knob, you know, how sensitive something's going to be, uh, what type of antenna you're using, some of the specifics that you can access through the keypad, uh, but with the small screen and the small keypad, it's a lot easier through the software interface. Now, that being said, it wasn't exactly an easy job. I'm going to rate this on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being plug and play, plug in, you're done, 10 being very difficult. I'm going to give this one an, a 7 or an 8. And the reason I'm going to say that uh, is will become obvious here as we describe the process again. Um, that's the, the, the goal, is to get the software on the computer so that you can talk to the radio. Let's talk about how you, typically, how you actually do that. Had to buy the radio, had to have a computer. Okay, everything matches up as far as uh, software and all that kind of stuff so that the operating system is going to work with what we need. So we have you know, materials, resources that are going to uh, accomplish the task. Next, we have to physically connect them. So I buy this wire off of eBay. I could have paid about $5 if I would have waited for it to come from Hong Kong. I ended up paying about $15 uh, to buy it from some middleman, somebody here in the U.S. who bought it and is sitting on it until somebody like myself doesn't want to wait to buy it from Hong Kong. Uh, it comes with drivers on a small disk, which since this laptop doesn't have any optical drive, any CD-ROM drive or anything, I had to put on another computer, put it onto this jump drive or USB drive, and now that's plugged in on the computer here. So you, let me just close that window, you plug in the cord for the first time and it's going to recognize, the computer's going to recognize it as a device. It's going to want to know how to talk to that device and to do that it uses a driver. That's what's on the disk or on the thumb drive. So when it asked for the driver to communicate with this device, I pointed it to the thumb drive and that installed. Now we have the d device, it's installed into the computer and as far as it's, the computer's concerned, it knows how to talk to this device as if it was a printer or a camera or a keyboard or anything else. It, it's satisfied. Next we have to download the software. The software comes from Kenwood's website. Uh, you download an installer file onto your computer through the internet then that installer file runs and expands into a larger program, the software that we see here that's running on this computer. So now we have the software to do the job and we have a physical connection. We have the computer talking to the cable and that's where I got hung up and it took me a while to figure this part out. The software wants to talk to an old-fashioned serial cable, a different type of connection to a computer. And again, this modern laptop doesn't even have a serial port. so. I didn't buy a serial cable, I'm using the USB port. So that was a conflict and that may or may not be an issue depending on the computers you're using or you know, the radio you're using. But for this specific one, the software was looking for the, a serial port and it's got a setting here at the top, at, in the uh, options of the software to uh, be told what COM port to talk to. My particular computer had a few COM ports open, however the USB installed itself onto COM port 9. So what I ended up having to do is go down to the control panels, this is Windows XP, go into the control panel, the system control panel, jump over to the hardware tab, jump into the device manager, open up the COM ports, find the prolific USB to serial bridge, which is the USB port, open it up, get over to its, dry, uh, its port settings, and then get down to the advanced tab, and then finally it was on port, or COM port 9 before. I switched it to COM port 10, and by doing that, I basically, in effect, moved 
where this resides in the brain of the computer, let's say. Then I went to the software again, and I went to its setting and changed it over to COM port 10. And from that point on, the software and the radio started talking to each other without any error messages. So, the other thing to keep in mind is that on the radio, you need to first jump into its, its uh, menu section, go to its menu that talks about the speaker and microphone jack, because that's where the the uplink cable connects to. It uses the microphone and, and earphone jack, which is cool because then it doesn't have to have another exposed port. You know, there's one less place for water and stuff to get in there. Anyway, so once you get into the menu, whoops, you have to go to this setting, and it's either going to be set to speaker mic, which is what it sounds like, or you can be set it to the computer, the PC mode, or this TNC, which I think is just an enhanced speaker microphone, if I remember right. But you have to set it to PC, and then you have to turn the, the radio off. And this was a step that, again, wasn't really clear in any of those directions. At least it wasn't obviously clear that this was a crucial step. So the radio has to be off, then it's connected to the computer, then the radio gets turned on. And there we go. And, and for whatever reason, that step is important. It can't, I guess it can't be turned on when you actually do the plugging in. Now, once we're plugged in, and, and like I say, once all that headache was gone, we're dealing with just the software. Uh, the software's kind of old, but it's definitely a lot easier than dealing with the uh, small keypad and display on the radio. So it's a lot easier with the mouse and the keyboard, of course. Uh, what we've got here on the left, on the first men menu, basically, or the first tab, is the memory channels, the, the storage memory. And right now it's kind of empty. As a test, I put the three International Space Station channels here. They're download and a couple of uploads. Uh, you can adjust different things. For example, when you open it up, it'll say ISS down. And that's why when you go to the uh, radio and you go to channel 200, it'll say ISS down there on the display. Because on the software, I've set it to say ISS down. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. You can put then, what, about 400 channels into this radio. And you can imagine having to type 400 frequencies into here with the text and everything would just drive you nuts. So being able to copy and paste and drag and drop or whatever from uh, the different websites and things that have those channels, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with. You've also got a couple of menus for uh, things like the welcome screen. I have it say a custom thing there. Uh, a lot of other things that I'm going to have to learn, different settings on the radio that, again, you can make adjustments here in the software a lot quicker. Now, there's a couple of reasons you'd want to do something like this. One, like I could say, it's a lot easier to deal with this, the software typically than the interface of the uh, radio itself. But you, with the cord that is used to connect the computer to the radio, you can get one that's basically this connection on both ends, and it's designed for cloning the radios to each other. So if you are going to uh, run the same radio across the department, a group of friends, a family, a small company, everybody could have the same radios. That way you're going to share things like antennas and microphones and battery packs and spare parts and things. Uh, but then that way you can set your channels up the way you want with the channels you're going to use most frequently, the channels you're going to use to talk to each other, uh, the channels that you want to scan, like the police and whatever. Uh, you set that up and you put it on the first radio, and then you just clone the radios off each other. That way everybody's got identical sets, everybody's on the same channel 3, and so on. So, again, it was pretty difficult having to go in and deal with COM ports and stuff. I, I can't say that that's always an issue, that you'll always have to do that. Unfortunately for me, in this particular setup, I needed to do it. And uh, luckily, I you know, was familiar with the system or the way to do that, but uh, not something I think most people would want to tackle. So, uh, otherwise, though, once it's up and running, it seems pretty efficient. It's a little clunky. You know, it's not the newest interface out there, but you can't beat it. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. A lot better than my old scanner, which, again, had 200 channels, but I had to type each separate one of them in here. And that was just such a bear, especially when the batteries go dead or, you know, something happens and you don't use it for a little while, and then the memory is erased and you have to do that all over again. This way it'll be stored on the software. I can store it as a text file. I'll probably share that, of course, but I can save it, and then that way if, I have, if something happens to the radio and I do need to reset it or change the battery or whatever, I can come in and just upload the, the same exact you know set of frequencies. So, interesting project. Took me two days, but now I'm even more ready to start talking on the radio. Thanks for watching.